Today I'm high up in the hills of North Yorkshire where I'll be talking you through a couple of sites that EE has newly built to provide coverage to these ultra rural locations. The first of which is just behind me right now. Here is the tower and you can see just in the distance quite how rural the area this site serves is. But we can see the tower here which is quite spartan really, there's not all that much on it at all and that's because it's a single band site. So it's just starting at the top are Comscope single high band antennas with Comscope master amplifiers. They carry the 1800 megahertz. And if we just go to the base of the site here we will be able to see the cabinets and things on it. So this box just has the connection for an external generator to be connected there. And then if we go on to the other side of the site, on the left is the radio cabinet which will house the Nokia 1800 megahertz flexes. In the middle will be the power converter for the DC for the radios. And on the right is the integrated service cabinet which will house the backhaul equipment. If we just walk around this compound, there is also a tripod for a satellite. If this, if this is going to require ultra redundancy so it could be connected back to EE's network by satellite if needs be however you can just see this this place I mean there are you know some houses down there and some animals and things but it's really not densely populated by any stretch of the imagination really rather unbelievably the backhaul from this site which is fibre comes fed underground and just appears up this telegraph pole where there's a five junction box and then just heading back down into the site. While the telegraph pole does have a cable that heads all the way up the hill and into the distance, it's actually cut off at the top of the pole and the connectivity for this does come directly from underground. Uh, which will be that yellow and black thick cable. There is also copper underground here as well which is the grey cable there as well. With this site being fibre fed and so rural with 20 megahertz of LTE bandwidth, it was incredibly fast. So I was getting about 148 megabits per second out of a theoretical maximum of 150 megabits per second because this doesn't have 256 gram deployed on it yet. So very, very impressive. For those curious about the location of this first site, the nearest place name is Wrench Green but it's also located just south of Hackness. Here is a map showing the location of the first site as well as actually the second site. The first site is the lower one which is designated as band 3 for 4G because it was band 3 4G like I say with 1800 MHz. So next let's talk about the upper site which as you can see from cell mapper is just indicated as band 20 and that's because all it radiates at the moment is 800 megahertz 4G however there's a lot more to it than that so here's a shot of the site and we can see that cabinet wise it looks very much the same as the previous one however on the antenna side of things this has dual band antennas on it which are made by Comscope, like the first example, but these have the ports for 800 megahertz, but also they have high band ports which have feeders with red tags going into them for 1800 megahertz. The mast also has mastered amplifiers underneath the antennas, which are for 800 megahertz, the bigger ones, and for 1800 megahertz, the smaller ones. These are also manufactured by Comscope. And actually, it's not just a case of the antennas and master amplifiers and feeders being there for 1800 megahertz. It also appears that the radios for 1800 megahertz are also installed. However, the reason it's not radiating anything on 1800 megahertz can possibly be explained by the sort of interesting aspects of this site. So unlike the first mast example, this second one is backhauled over satellite. So it's not fiber fed or point to point link. This is using satellite. And satellite bandwidth is incredibly expensive and also the latency is high. But clearly that means that 
if there isn't the network demand to justify 1800 megahertz let alone the cost effective backhaul to be able to support it if it were radiating then clearly you're not going to enliven the 1800 megahertz also the second interesting thing about this mast is it doesn't have a fixed electricity supply either it's fed off generator and that's also incredibly expensive and the 800 megahertz is 5 megahertz paired of bandwidth whereas for 1800 megahertz they'd be doing 20 megahertz paired 4g and then whatever they'd be running it for 2g so there's a lot of bandwidth and therefore the power consumption would increase massively as well and obviously with a generator that needs refueling and this is not in the most accessible location that's very expensive and you want to keep power consumption as low as you can and once again since the load on the site is low you don't want it to be broadcasting anything unnecessary with any energy being very very expensive however the wiring of 1800 megahertz on this does signal potential future possibilities for the site and I'm sure they are working to get fibre and permanent electricity to the site but it is a long long way down a farm track and therefore it would be incredibly costly to deploy fixed backhaul and electricity. For those curious about the performance of this satellite fed site download speeds were typically peaking at over 13 megabits per second in terms of physical throughput which is very very impressive speed tests were a bit lower 8 megabits per second was more common and the biggie though is latency and at best this was about 600 milliseconds and at worst it was close to a second and that's because of the amount of time required for the communication between the site satellite and geostationary orbit and then the satellite base station which will then connect to EE's network essentially through a whole series of network switches and the like. Now in reality I didn't actually particularly notice the latency. When you're sending a message or something like that it does take a little bit longer than usual. It's not like completely instant but at the same time like I said it's not particularly noticeable. I do worry a bit about the amount of cost EE in Avanti VSAT fees though for the bandwidth that I've consumed on that site because it serves me quite regularly. The final thing to say before I thank you for watching is that both these sites are featured are two sector and that's because a three sector layout would not be beneficial to the area so for example in the first site a third sector would end up pointing up the hill which would cause all manner of reflections and signal problems and would just serve nothing really anyway. So two sectors for these sites naturally works very well. And radio wise for 1800 megahertz at least they were using a pair of Nokia 3TX radios each. And the reason for a pair is because of course two sectors of 2TX means 4TX is your total transmit budget and therefore the radios being three transmit each means you need two and that does provide obviously capability to run three sectors of two transmits there are some spare ports on the transmit side let alone the receive side where there are a lot of spare ports because the radios are six receive in fact each so you've got 12 receive total of which you're only actually using four here um, but that's the nature of the Nokia radio ecosystem on these on the 800 megahertz side of things on the second site couldn't see the radios unfortunately so I couldn't really comment but quite on Nokia or 800 megahertz sites they do quite often use a pair of 800 megahertz 3TX radios as well. So thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed looking at these ultra rural EE new build sites and they just go to show the lengths that EE is going to to deploy 4G to ever increasing rural areas that have previously not been served all that much due to the commercial unviability of providing service to them and the challenges just full stop of like the malls for example where backhaul power are both very difficult to acquire and for that matter coverage footprints are likely to be quite small because of the terrain.